Hello everyone. Welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at how we can use S concrete to design our sections according to the CSA 2319 provisions. So to start off, we want to start off with a blank S concrete model. Uh, we've got some default settings in here that are initializing my model, but I'm going to actually start from scratch here by going to the file menu and going to new. And here we can see that we can select the building standard, the units, the bar type, uh, and the type of section that we're using. In this example, everything is set up as, as a good starting point, except for the building standard. I'm actually going to change this to the CSA 2019 code, uh, just to make sure we're using the latest. So I'll click OK. Now as a reminder here, I have a model that's already set up here. If I go to the Edit menu, I go to Edit Section, I can also see where I can reconfigure that design code or the units or the bar type that's being used. We can have a variety of different bar types. We can define our own custom bar types. We can also choose here our shear method and determine our or specify our seismic options that are used for either a beam, column, or wall sections, according to CSA 18, A19. I'm just going to stick with the default, so click OK. And I'll continue working my way down this list here. I'm going to go to Loads next, and S Concrete is currently set up with just some default loads. Of course, I can import loads uh, from S-Frame or from ETABs or from spreadsheets that I might have uh, that will represent the cross-sectional loads according to this type of uh, schematic that we can see here. So in this case, I've got eight different factored load combinations uh, that are applied to this cross-section. And we can also see the reinforcement that we have. So I've got, in this case here, uh, four 25M bars in the bottom, two plus two, just indicates here that we could potentially have different bar sizes uh, in uh, one layer. I just had the same bar sizes, but for illustration purposes, I've separated them out into two. And at the top here, I've got uh, five 25M bars. For my stirrups, I've got 10M stirrups at 200 millimeter spacing, and I also have face steel, which is 4 15M bars at 180 millimeter spacing. And this is giving me a utilization ratio for this cross section, uh, where we can see that our overall status is unacceptable. So our status is unacceptable, but our utilization ratios vary depending on the check that was being performed. So showing us here the shear and torsion utilization is not failing. We get a utilization ratio of about 37% or 0.370. And our end versus M axial load versus moment utilization is actually the one that's causing some issues. Uh, I have a utilization of 1.183, so about 18% over the capacity of this beam. And I can go to the re results menu, and I can go to report, and I can see more details into what's going on here. Remember that we've got a variety of different uh, input loads. And so out of these eight load combinations that we have, they're all factored, it's found that we can see the red text in a report. It's found that uh, the governing load combination is load combination number three, which happens to be this one right here. We'll notice that it actually has the largest uh, moment. And we can see here it's looking at the axial utilization. And so the axial uh, demands of 300 kilonewtons uh, and our capacity is much higher than that. So we're not having any issues with axial loads specifically. But when we look at our bending utilizations, we can see that our bending demands 414.8 kilonewton meters is greater than the resisting moment uh, of 350.6. So it's giving us a utilization ratio of 1.183, which we saw before. And if I wanted to adjust this, I could use the uh, option to manipulate the bar sizes with the hotkeys that we can see here. If I left click, for example, on the two number 25 bars, 25 M bars rather, I can left click to add more steel and it's going to bring that utilization ratio down slightly. I can also upsize the bar size by just left clicking on the uh, 25. So it goes from a 25M to a 30M. And I can continue doing this uh, until I get something that works for me. So here you can see that I've actually used a total of six 25M bars on the top and five 30M bars on the bottom. And I'm getting my strength utilizations less than one. So an N versus M utilization of 0.966 and a shear and torsion utilization of 0 0.370. But I'm still getting this warning status. So originally it was unacceptable, meaning that it was the section wasn't strong enough to meet my demands. Now it's showing me a warning. The best place to look for this is to go back into the results report. And let me just scroll down to the bottom here. I'll click on list of messages. And I can see here that according to clauses 11.3.9.2 uh, and 11.3.9.3 of the A23.3 uh, 19 code, we have an issue with the top steel area provided doesn't meet the shear and torsion requirements. And I can scroll up through the list until I see that 
that coloring that I was looking for. So I can see the area of steel provided and the maximum or the minimum that's required is slightly higher than that. So I'd actually need to increase that. And maybe it's done by just increasing the bar size, uh, which in this case here worked for me, or add another layer. We have lots of different options. But using this interface, we're able to actually get a very interactive uh, workflow to come up with the design. We can also optimize based off of some user-defined constraints and then tell the software to actually iterate to find a solution. And this also works for columns and walls as well. Uh, and can be integrated with workflows to perform a batch or uh, actually design uh, sections from third-party analysis software like eTabs as well. So if you'd like more information, we do have training available on S-Concrete. You can also visit our websites uh, or check out some of our other YouTube videos.